Join me right now on Kumite TV. It's surging UFC welterweight Diego Lima. What's going on, Diego? What's up, my man? Pleasure to have. Uh, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, let's start off first. You know, you've had a wild ride in the UFC, but now you're on a two-fight win streak. Are you the happiest you've ever been as a fighter? Because it seems like because every time I see you after a fight, you're smiling. <laughs> yeah, man, that's just my. Uh, I'm always smiling, man. I'm always. I'm a really happy guy, and you know that's just me. You know, everything that's happening is just. It comes with it, you know. And it's just I'm always like that. I'm always happy, and yes, man. As a fighter, for sure, man. I feel like I'm, I'm hitting my prime, and it's just perfect timing. You know, I'm really excited. Hitting your prime, you know. How do you know that? You know, in yourself, you personally. How do you know that you're at this point in your career? Man, I just feel good, man. I just feel like I can beat anybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I just maturity, you know. Like fight IQ and. You know, the way I train now, just everything, you know, everything that goes with it. You know, I just feel feel the best everywhere. Your last fight, you know, it was a pretty dominant fight, but they gave you the split decision, right? Mm-hmm. It was a weird decision over Court McGee. You know, you after that fight, you mentioned something about your contract. You know, you wanted to renegotiate your contract. Did you mm-hmm. get table? Did you sit down and be able to do that before your next fight? Yes, yes, we did, man. My manager did, you know. I'm actually, I got a real contract now, you know. Before I, um, I was on a tough contract as well, mm-hmm. Ultimate Fighter, you know. It really, the, the pay doesn't go up much, and, you know, you start pretty low coming out, and, you know, I earned it, you know. I earned it. There was two two fight win streak against tough guys, and, you know, it was just perfect timing, and, and they, they went with it, you know. They, they accepted, and it, so it's all good now, all good. <laughs> Yeah, another reason to be happy, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, since then, you know, did you plan on returning around this time or were you just sitting around waiting for the UFC to kind of give you a matchup? Man, it's, um, yeah, it was, uh, this is where I want. I wanted to come back in um, September. So, you know, it's at the end of the beginning of October. It was around that time, you know, because for me, yeah, it's hard to be in camp while my kids are in the summer. You know, they have their vacation in the States are from June and July. So, you know, I don't like being in camp while they're out of school. You know, it's just I like that time to enjoy with them. I do have three kids. So, you know, you can't take that for granted, man. And, you know, I just don't like being camp all day in the summer. So as soon as they go back to school, I want to start camp and it worked out perfect just like that you know i was able to go to brazil take them to brazil have some fun you know enjoy vacation went to the beach a couple of times and you know it was just great time and you know now we're ready now i'm ready yeah man uh yeah you never can get that time back especially with your kids exactly other than you know spending time with your kids i'm pretty sure you've been you know jumping in on the mats from time to time probably getting your especially getting your brother ready for bellator you know the Mm -hmm. tournament and everything have you been kind of keeping your body in shape the whole time or did you kind of allow yourself to relax a little bit and enjoy your oh, life? Oh, no, man. We we never relax anymore, you know. That that just comes with that maturity, you know. Mm-hmm. If I'm not training for fight camp, I, I'm always training, man. I'm either doing gi or, you know, doing drills on a stand-up, you know, helping other fighters out because we have a lot of fighters in Atlanta, you know, helping my students out because we do have a gym. So, you know, I, I'm always busy, man. I'm always doing something. You know, I spent – a lot of time with my family, but you know, that, that, that's just, that's my job, you know? So that doesn't go, go away. I'm always training. I'm always in shape. And in Brazil is hard. I'm not going to lie. You know, <laughs> I did train there, but man, the food there is just, <laughs> it's hard to stay in shape, mm-hmm. man. I came back pretty heavy from Brazil. So, you know, the beginning of camp, like the, when I got a fight schedule, it's just worrying about getting that weight down and getting all those carbs out of the system so you know but it was good it worked out good yeah man you gotta enjoy life sometimes right Mm -hmm, Um, of course ufc 243 is your next stop when they told you we want you to be on this card in australia were you pretty were you kind of hesitant like man i don't want to fly you know all the way across the world or were you like open to it you're like hey i want to go oh heck no man i was uh, i was right on i was like let's go you know I knew the opponent right away, too. I knew exactly who it was. And, you know, just that card, man, they said it's going to be the biggest one of the year. So as soon as they said that, I was like, what? I am on. Let's go. Like, I didn't hesitate one bit. And it's 
a pay-per-view and I believe it's your first main card pay-per-view you're going to be on and it's going to be 50,000 possibly 50,000 <laughs> fans in the seats. Yes, yeah. Man, what does that mean anything to you? Is that like it sights you, you know, like it's incredible, isn't it? It is, man. I'm really excited about it, you know. And and you know, it's like I told you before, man, it just it comes with it. You know, you win fights, they take care of you, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm on a two fight win streak, but man, under the Zufa banner, man, you count all my fights on Ultimate Fighter, that's going to be my 15th fight for Zufa. So, you know, I've been around for a while, man. You know, it's just, it was up and down, a lot of downs, a lot of up. But, you know, I'm here, man. I'm excited. And, you know, it just comes with it, man. All the blessings just follow, you know. It just comes with it. So I'm really excited. Luke Jumo, you know, is he the type of guy that you expected to have, you know, in your next fight? Uh, I'm not sure, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. Because, you know, they say when, you, when they match me up with strikers, man, you're going to get a fight. You know, it's like I fought some tough wrestlers before and, you know, of course that's on my hand, you know, let him be be controlled like that, you know, that's my fault. But still, you know, you put me against a striker, man, you're going to get a fight. And, you know, and they see that, you know, they gave me Chad, they gave me court, you know, I was still able to defend all of court shots. So, you know, they see, man, you give, you give me a fight that's going to fight me, you know, you're going to get a fight. And, you know, they see that. So I'm just excited that they see that. You know, and they give me good matchups, you know, matchups that you're going to get a fight of it. That's why we're on a pay-per-view and, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. Right now you're sitting in Phuket, Thailand. You know, you went there a few weeks ahead of the the UFC, you know, 243. How mm-hmm. much, you know, time did you spend at home, you know, in camp preparing for this fight? In camp, it was a regular eight-week camp, you know, mm-hmm. but before we were training already, like I said, but... You know, regularly I do eight weeks, you know, eight weeks. The, the first the first few weeks just, you know, getting in good fight shape. And then we turn it up, you know, the last the, between like, what, f- between five and week four or five mm-hmm. and seven, we're turning it up. So, you know, it's been up and, man, we're on fire, man. I'm excited. I've been training a lot. Yeah, I know you have uh, an incredible head coach. The OG, you know, Jukal, you got your oh, brother yeah. helping you out. And I see that oh, you yeah. also brought in uh, Anthony Martin. You know, how yes, helpful has yes, he, he been was, in this camp? Man, he was here this whole camp, man. He helped me out. He was my main sparring partner for this for this camp. Uh, he moved to Atlanta as well. So, you know, so happy to have him there. And, you know, he came to Thailand as well. So, man, it, it's been a blessing, you know, being a blessing having him. He really helped me out this camp. And, you know, he's been helping my brother out. And then now he's got a fight schedule in November. So we're going to be helping him out. And, you know, it's just been a, a good little group, man. It's been We've been having a great group. you got Will Brooks up there now, too. And, man, it's been great. It's been great. So, Martin, he's part of the team now with you guys in Atlanta? Yes, sir. He's from oh, Atlanta now. Man. He's American top team Atlanta as well. And, you know, the team is growing good. Yeah. I see that you guys are growing. Uh, it's at an incredible rate. You know, it's uh, it's it's an incredible team. You guys got an incredible head coach. Um, now, let's talk about Thailand. You know, you're there. You're there for a few weeks before you go to Australia. You know, where, where have you been working over there? Man, we were at, uh, you know, Tiger Muay Thai and then Phuk... Uh, Pakei, uh top team, not not top team. Uh, what? There's another. There's two other gyms as well. You know, I don't know the names. The names are also similar, but you know, we got Leo. He's a Brazilian head coach here. He's been helping out, mm-hmm. us a lot. And man, it's it's a blessing here. You know, you just train, man. It's just uh, every fighter. It reminds me a lot of the Ultimate Fighter House. Mm-hmm. You know, you just eat, sleep, and train. That's all you do here. And you know, all the focus is on the training and. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, Leo, I think when I was down there, I talked to your brother. Yes, and, that's where uh, they were. He was yeah, working with Leo you. at Phuket Fight Club, which is like... Fight Club, that's what Yeah, it it's one of the... Fight Club. You know, yep. it's insane over there, the the, the guys that they have, the, the Man, strikers. Crazy. Yep. When you visualize this fight, do you see a, a, a quick finish happening, you know, especially with another striker, you know, you're going to go face-to-face? It can, you know, I, uh, I visualize every position, man, every position, you know, I visualize 15 minutes, everything he does, I'll be ready, you know, and then I'm just looking to implement my game plan, man. I don't, I really, I train for myself now, you know, it's just not, there's nothing specific we're doing for him. And, you know, I just get myself better, man. If I focus on myself, there's no stopping me. 
So, you know, anything can happen. A fight's a fight, you know. So, you know, <laughs> anything can happen. Of course, of course, I visualize a quick finish. I visualize a quick submission. I visualize a decision. I'm ready for everything, you know. Mentally, got to be ready for everything. For a fighter being in his prime, you know, I'm pretty sure you're looking at the welterweight division, looking at the title picture because you expect yourself to rise up the ranks and fight for the title. Right now, you know, you got Usman and Covington. They're supposed to fight, but they don't have a fight coming. You know, what is your thoughts on that whole situation? Oh, man, I stay out of it, man. I stay out of it. I I don't even think about that, man. There's just so much drama going on, you know, and. You know, there's nothing I can control, nothing I can do. I'm just waiting for my time, you know. It's one step at a time. I got a big fight, you know, winning this fight. There's three in a row. And then, you know, looking at maybe getting a ranked opponent next. You know, there's a lot of guys on win streaks as well. So, you know, the welterweight's popping, man. You know, we let those top 10 guys, they can handle themselves, you know. We let them do what they got to do. And, you know, us up and comers, man, we're coming, you know. It's just... I, I'll, I'll take my time, you know. It's one fight at a time, man. You can't, you can't win a fight. Even if I win three fights in a row, you know, you can't, can't just go call out a top ten, top five. It's like, no, man. You wait for those guys to call you out. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to steal anybody's thunder. You know, I feel like a lot of guys does that. You know, it's like, no, they work to be there. They work to be in the top ten. They work to be in the top five. And you know, if they want to fight you, they call you out. Yeah, but, you know, it's like, what am I going to call one of them out for? They're like, man, you're not ranked. You're not doing it, you know? So, you know, I, I'm taking my time, man. It's it's one step at a time, and I don't, I don't want to be – I want to make my own noise. I don't want to steal anybody else's noise, you know? If the opportunity presents itself, you know, so somebody gets hurt and you're able to jump in, of course, you know, I'm going to be ready for that. But other than that, man, I'm making my own name. I'm making my own thunder. I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder. And, you know, I'm going to make my own. You know, another thing, you know, as a member of American Top Team, I know that you're in Atlanta, but right now there's a lot of drama going on. You say you don't want to be involved in the drama, but it's kind of like, Not at all. you know, it's going <laughs> on right there. It's brewing between, you know, Covington and Masvidal. What is going through your mind when you see that? Because you are a part of that team. Mm-hmm. Man, it's just crazy for me. It's just mm-hmm. crazy. You know, I'm not really close friends with any of them you know but i do follow them you know they know we know each other we see each other we're gonna talk and you know it's just crazy man i i don't like that it's out of hand right now you know it's out of hand uh kobe i think is just doing a little too much right now that's way too much man you made a name for yourself already you're the number one contender uh there's not much that need to be said you know you just take the fight you're gonna fight for the title and you know, Masvidal, Poirier, you know, those guys are there to fight, man. They don't care, man. They just want to train and fight, and they don't care about all the stuff outside. You know, they're just fighters. But, you know, it's a little crazy. It is. When I see it, I'm like, oh, like, come on, man. You know, because then, because we got kids that come to our gym, and we have a lot of, of students, you know, we have a lot. So they're going to ask, hey, what is AT? Why, why are these guys like this? So, you know. It, it's just it's it's a mess it's a mess it shouldn't be like that you know in mma there's all different types of competitors you know at this point in your career do you believe yourself as a martial artist or a prize fighter uh a little bit of both you know mm-hmm. prize fighter you know we'll get there we'll get there you know i think using a martial artist that i am you know and just the person i am i'll get to the prize fighter you know it's just it's just buying my time, man. It's one step at a time. That's that's one thing that with me, you know, I, I've been through a lot in this game, man. And it's just, it's one step at a time. You know, we'll get there when, when the time is right. All right, man. Well, October 5th, UFC 243, Melbourne, Australia. Thank you, Diego, for the time, man. And uh, good luck on the fight and the future that you have. Hey, thank you very much, man. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Put on a great fight and, you know, let's do it. Mm-hmm.